Pittsburgh Pro season. It was, can he handle the pressure of making the playoffs? Can he handle the pressure of going on the road to New Orleans and playing the Saints in front of a raucous crowd in the NFC Championship game? Can he overcome the first quarter struggles he had last Sunday? Yes, 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 and yes. Yep. At the end of the day, it's still a block and tackle and pitch and catch game. This is football still at its essence, and I get it. All the lights are on. Hundreds of millions of people are watching, but far be it for us to count out Jared Goff before he's even like, stepped on the field that they'll play the game at for this big Super Bowl matchup. He can definitely handle the pressure. Like him under pressure? What are you, overreaction or not there for you? Yeah, he showed, he showed it's overreaction. He showed me a lot in that NFC Championship game. I still had the image of him kind of like holding it, you know, trying to hear Sean McVay right. um, during the game. And you could tell just being in that hostile environment, it is not easy to win down there in New Orleans in that Superdome. No, no, no. And uh, to dig yourself out of a 13-0 hole uh, in, in the biggest game of your career, to me, that that, uh, that that speaks volumes about the growth of Jerry Goff. And so, I, th- th- why are we? This is ridiculous. This is overreaction. What do you think? I, I agree. It's almost humorous, but definitely an overreaction. I think, uh, you know, he's proved it all season. And then in that championship game, I agree with you, Damien, to go in there and beat Drew Brees. He ain't bad either. <laughs> right. but, um, you know, on the road in that kind of hostile environment. And, you know, the thing I look back at, too, is, you know, you hit struggles every season. I don't care, you know, what Super Bowl team you're on. Tom will talk about it. You know, my experience in three different runs is you're going to hit those bad spots. And Jared Goff did. I mean, that, that Bears game and then follow it up with that, that Eagles game, you know, that showed me a lot to write that season by a young coach in Sean McVay as well as a young quarterback in Jared Goff. To get that ship righted and get back on track mm-hmm. and do the things to get where they are now, uh, definitely an overreaction. And, and I remember, too, the Monday night football game against the Chiefs. We hyped that maybe even more than the Super Bowl. Think yes. about yeah. that thing. The yeah. whole world's watching that. That four-touchdown awesome. monster it. game that you yeah. had to go win that one. I mean, that's, that's pressure. So we, we've seen this guy under pressure a handful of times. Speaking of Todd Gurley, though, he's been slow rolling through the playoffs. But maybe the biggest surprise – only three catches for six yards all postseason. That's weird. Here is Gar- Gurley on where he stands health-wise right now. Nah, I'm good. If it was an issue on my knee, it will be on the injury report. Come on, man. I'm at practice. I'm playing. Like I don't care if Jake McQuaid, the Super Bowl MVP. I got one more game left. I don't care what nobody's talking about. Y'all can call me hurt. Y'all can call me whatever. Bro, we're going to the Super Bowl. What do y'all not understand? Like, it's not about me. This sport never been about me. It's never been about one player. It's a little bit about you. Uh, it's a little bit about you. High paid running back, big old monster of a guy. Our statement reads, Todd Gurley will be Super Bowl MVP for Super Bowl 53. Overreaction or not? What do we think? That's not an overreaction to me. Wow. Now, first of all, I want to say this. Todd Gurley has shown tremendous leadership over the past two weeks. The shine hasn't been on him on the field. He's handled it with incredible maturity. And I think really been a leader at a young age that I'm not sure most players are equipped to be at that juncture of their career. But moreover, he was the best player on this offense for like three quarters of the season until he got banged up down the stretch. The MVP almost always goes to a quarterback in the Super Bowl yep. or a defensive player who scores a touchdown. It's pretty infrequent that a running back gets that MVP. But it should not be a surprise if Todd Gurley is the best player on the field for the Rams on offense, despite what the past couple of weeks have shown us. He's a unique talent. He can impact the passing game. He can, of course, impact the running game. I don't think it's an overreaction. If they win this game, yeah, I think he's got a good shot at the MVP. Yeah, I think the last running back to win was maybe Terrell Davis. Terrell Davis, that's right. Not sure if I was born yet or not. It's It's been been a little while. Probably not. Probably a little cleaner. (laughs) What do you think? Overreaction or not there, Damian? So let me ask you a question. Who are you picking to win the Super Bowl? I got the Patriots. I, I, okay. My official well, pick is the my, Patriots. You answered my question. Right? So you're picking the you're Patriots. Answer, what you're it's overreaction because it, cause I feel, I feel yeah. like the Patriots are going to win. It, team, it, we're not going to get the MVP to a team that's uh, that that that's going to be on a losing end. Mm. Listen, is he capable? Absolutely. He's he's their he's their biggest offensive threat uh, for the Los Angeles Rams. I just feel like the Patriots uh, the Patriots have done a really good job of bottling these these running backs these running backs up. And Todd Gurley's been has been platooning more, more more, so lately than he was early in the year, um, giving up carries to C.J. Anderson. So with all those things being said, I'm saying this whole reaction. What do you think, Coach? I'm going to revolve around two points here. One, a little bit to give Gurley some love because, you know, I think he has been great. I know C.J. Anderson. I know he's 
got Super Bowl experience, and uh, they do have a one-two punch there. But Todd Gurley did carry this team most season, and I think he's going to have a big game and a good game because he's going to be fresh, he's going to be ready to go. And I do agree about the, the unselfishness of Todd Gurley, which i got to give him a shout-out for that. But I'm with Damian. I think it's an overreaction for him to be the MVP because I am also picking the Patriots. And typically, like you said, there's not been a running back given that award since Terrell Davis, and that's been a minute. So uh, I'm going to say it's an overreaction. The, the six receiving yards, though. I mean, you think about Surprise. the postseason. The six receiving yards. What, that's crazy. Why can't so, I? I mean, even if you use the run the game, of Todd Gurley, you can't hold no. down greatness for that long. No. Nope. I, I think down. I'm with you. Wouldn't I think they, they, they may be ready yep. to explode come Super Bowl Sunday. So let's get to the top six plays. We're six days now to the Super Bowl. The top six plays for these Rams. Take a look. Right here, we'll go Ooh, straight mm. to the pick six. This is Ibu Kam yeah. taking it all the way back, gets it down to the that, that was a good run. That was a good six. run. Yeah. Right there. Finish. Mm. That back all the way. Got Sam, 11, one of two seats. Eastern Washington players on this Rams roster, along with Cooper Cup, that made a massive difference. They got the red turf there Eastern Washington. Hard to scout, but they found those two good guys. One of the best games I've ever seen. Go right back to it. Under two minutes, Rams down 51-47. Get it to Everett. Go make a play. He could be a big factor come championship Sunday. What do you think? Uh, I agree. I agree. Sometimes tight ends get overlooked, and it's hard to to, to match up on everybody, but uh, very very well possible. And I think that's going to be a key is how do you match up with him? That's going to be something I would look for. For the the Patriots. Right. Let's go week four against the Vikings. Golf rolls out. A little 19-yard teardrop in there to Cooper Cup. His presence, how missed come Sunday? Well, listen, I, you can't you can't ride that boat now. I mean, he's been gone for a minute, but yep. boy, was he was he a big part of their offense. Once you get to this territory where Belichick starts taking away favorite weapon, favorite weapon, favorite that's weapon, right. you start going, uh-huh. where's that man Cooper uh-huh. hiding? That's right. Where's that man Cooper go? <laughs> hey, right, one so thing I'll say to you, you got to adjust, yep. and they have. They have. They have, yep. they have adjusted. Yep. Yep. Hold on. I'm a little speechless. I'm just sitting here admiring the ridiculousness of Aaron Donald. 20 and a half sacks. Half of the team's total. I'm glad somebody was on this set was doing their job and watching the ridiculousness there. This is week nine now against the Saints. Golf going to oh, get this yeah. thing out. Look at that move. Look at that. Unbelievable. Hey, let's not forget about Jared Goff's um, mobility. I mean, the yeah. people lose Very sight good of that rock. sometimes. Yep. Uh, he, he he's, not a great sta- job he's, in the he's not a statue in the pocket. Now to the NFC Championship game. Put a kick on here. I like this. Is this the, do they call him Legatron? Is that what Legatron, they call him? Okay. Greg, the leg. The one issue I have with all of the nonsense surrounding the blown call in that game is that we have overlooked the brilliance of a 57 yard yeah. Google that if he. The NFL Live, presented by Golden Corral. I literally have to spend most of my time standing right behind Sean and ripping him out of the way when the official's about to run into him. It's like a dance that I don't even know I have a partner behind me. The one thing I would say Sean McGray is not, not good at is the situational awareness of the actual sideline in, in game. A lot of times you're just kind of so locked in that, that you're not cognizant of blocking some of the officials' path. He hasn't been run, run over yet, so he has to get as close as he can to the action, I guess. He pulls me out of the way at the right times, and uh, it's been a good thing. Stand by him all game and prevent penalties, so you're welcome, Sean. Thank God for Ted Rath. Well, the good thing about being young is you're still quick. The Super Bowl coaches couldn't be more different. Sean McVay turned 33 last week, but he's half the age of Bill Belichick. McVay is in year two with the Rams, while Belichick has the longest tenure, tenure among active head coaches. But the win percentages are remarkably similar. Take a look with their current teams. 0.743 there for McVay and 0.741 for Belichick over there on the other side. Welcome to the film room brought to you by Verizon here with Coach Fox. So you led both the Panthers and the Broncos to the Super Bowl. Curious if you could talk to McVay. What advice might you give him about playing in Super Bowl number one? Well, a little bit what Matt Hasselbeck, you know, said to Jared Goff is close out the noise. You know, he talked about headphones, and Sean will get to wear headphones, except he will be listening to some noise, but not crowd noise. Uh, but just keeping it the same. It's good, like any other game from the standpoint, whoever executes best is going to win, and just keep that focus. The one thing from a schedule standpoint that is unique uh, is – the pregame, all right, is they kick you off 45 minutes before kickoff, is making sure your players are 
occupied and understand how long that's going to be. Because in a typical game, even through all the playoffs, even the AFC or, excuse me, NFC championship game is about 15 minutes. You get timed and, you know, the players typically have that routine. They keep you and kick you off the field early enough to where you're in that locker room for 45 minutes. And with two weeks preparation, there's not a whole lot to, to, to restudy on. So it's making sure they occupy their time because they're going to be wound up. Yeah, and we hear about all these kind of week-to-week -week adjustments and changing things. The last minute that Belichick does, you coached against him in a Super Bowl. What, in your opinion, makes him so tough to play against? Well, I mean, he's the the master of preparation you yeah. know it's fail to prepare prepare to fail so he's going to go back way deep into any kind of scouting report or tendencies in fact i was watching super bowl two years ago they're playing the atlanta falcons and they ran a two-point play or a direct snap brady's faking like it's a high snap uh, for conversion that they ran against us eight years earlier in the Super Bowl in the uh, Super Bowl 38. So you better be ready for anything and you better go deep in your preparation. So, so it always kind of gets brought up this time of year and Belichick's going to take away your favorite thing. Whatever you like to do best, whatever you do best, he's going to try to take that away. What might that be for the Rams, do you think? What is he going to go after defensively? Well, I think Bill and his defensive staff have worked extremely hard because Sean McVay and their offensive staff do a great job of making things look alike. I'm talking about the run game, regardless of whether it's Todd Gurley or, or it's C.J. Anderson. All right, They better have great eyes on defense. Whether you're a safety and run support, whether you're a linebacker, is seeing the difference between those run blocks and the boots and play actions that come off of it. So that's a big part of their games where they get a lot of explosive plays, and I think that'll be critical in uh, their execution on defense. We'll take a look. A lot of that cover zero, a lot of bump and run on those receivers for the Chiefs. We'll see if they get that same kind of pressure in the face of Jared Goff. When NFL Live returns, we'll count down the best plays of Belichick and Brady's ninth run for a ring. Rock somehow able to secure that. Film Room is brought to you by Tacos. Win your Super Bowl. Time now for the Tostitos countdown to kick off. The Patriot fleet arrived in Atlanta yesterday. And with six days to the Super Bowl, we might as well take a look back. The six best plays from the Patriot season's pick six is what we call it. We'll take a look at this thing right now. You take a look at the, the men walking off the plane. Week seven, Patriots at the Bears, and it's Patterson. On the kickoff return, we think we get a little uh, little run back from Hester, maybe. We get a kickoff return. Last, in this game? last. Right. What do you call this game? I'm talking about what he's done. He's lined up. He's a return man. He plays wide out. He plays running back. back for a little while. That's, I mean, that's, that guy's that's, that's, called, that's called being resourceful. Yes. Yep. Twin brothers, the Patriots right. have. Mm -hmm. How about this? At this the is time Devin. of this interception, Devin McCourty reached the fastest speed of any ball carrier to that point of the season in the NFL. That guy can fly, and of course his brother, twin Jason, can as well. That, that whole trade started with a text. How about that? That's Devin texted good. Coach Belichick. Two McCourties is better than one. As you take a look at Gronk throwing Gronk things down the sideline right there. How good has he looked to you in the playoffs? Is this, is this a healthy Gronk we're going to see Super Bowl Sunday? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, this is the healthiest that we're, gonna, we're probably going to see. But I've been actually... Gronk in the run game has just been an absolute monster. Yes. That's, I where, agree. He, that's where he's been the most valuable. That was week eight. This is week nine. Patriots hosting the Packers. Brady gets this thing at, to Edelman. Edelman gets this thing back to White and White down the sideline. Expect a couple of these plays in the Super Bowl. Both those guys, when they were going through trying to figure out who's wide, who's going to be a wide out, those two cats carried him. Especially White because there was four games that Edelman missed. That's right. Early in the season. Great That's discipline right. there by the offensive line to not get too far downfield, which of course would be a penalty. And as you mentioned, Coach, no better time than now to empty the bag for either team. AFC no Championship game. Patriots Chiefs, our fifth play of the six. And this guy's the answer to the bell, too, down the stretch. Oh. Big time. I mean, hey, big players make big plays and big moments. And That's right. And they'd have guys, they have guys step up like nobody. Even Burkhead was making some plays down exactly. the stretch of that championship game. Take another look. This is week seven. Mm. You see Jones, big one-handed. Leaping play right there to Jonathan go get that Jones, thing. Great on a Harold Richmond right. defensive back. So tonight the mic is wide open in Atlanta.